Hi everyone, this is Wafa Lango and welcome you all in Grammar in Detail. Today we have got the last kind of verb, it is known as infinite verbs or non-finite verbs. The definition of infinite or non-finite verbs is those verbs which don't show the exact particular tense or possibility are called infinite or non-finite verbs. So those verbs which don't show the exact or particular tense. Now the example, let us little bit discuss about the ex not exact or particular tense is she dash beaten him. If we only use the non-finite verb beaten, we won't be able to tell it is which tense. Like I say, she dash beaten him. It is your finite verb as in green that is telling you the tense like finite verb that it is which tense present perfect. If I put over here add, it means past perfect tense. And if I put here will have, it means future perfect. So finite verbs tell us the exact tense. Non-finite verbs don't tell us the exact tense. They are not the verbs to tell you the exact tense. Now beaten is your non-finite verb in this sentence. In the same way, you are learning English. If I say you dashed learning English, Learning is not telling you the exact tense over here. R is the verb which is known as your finite verb telling you the exact tense but learning is non-finite verb which is not telling the exact tense. If I say you dash learning English you won't be able to tell it is which progressive tense. But if I say you were learning English it is past progressive and if I say you will be learning it is future progressive future continuous tense. So, were, are or will be are the finite verbs which are telling you the tense, that it is which tense. Learning is only the verb here used as an ing form, not telling you the exact tense or particular tense, that's why we call it non-finite or infinite verb. In the same way, e dash teach us grammar. Now, will is your finite verb which is telling you the tense in future teach is your non-finite verb or infinite verb which is not telling you the exact tense the same tense is uh, verb is used in present indefinite and as well as in the negative sentences of past indefinite tense but when you will use do uh, does over here as esis form or did then it will be able to tell you the tense so will, does and did are your finite verbs which are telling you the tense but teach here is not used as the finite verb. And keep in your mind with helping verb does and did we are going to add negative adverb not then it will be telling you past and present tense like he like we say he does not teach English he did not teach English or in the same way. He will teach us grammar. Air will is telling you the tense, but teach is not telling you the exact tense. Here we talked about the tense. Let us discuss about the possibility of an action. Now, when any verb does not tell you the possibility of an action is also called your non-finite or infinite verb. I dash invite him. White is your non-finite or infinite verb, which is used here as bare infinitive. What are bare infinitive? Only first form of the verb is known as bare infinitive. Now example I say could. I've already taught you in model auxiliary verbs in detail that what are the possibility of an action. Now suppose I say I dash invite him. If I say I must invite him, it means this action is 100% possible to be done. And it is necessary to be done. In the same way, I ought to learn English, it means 85%. And if I say I should learn English, it means 75%. In the same way, I dash invite him, I must invite him 100%. I ought to invite him, you are stressing 85% it is to be done. I should invite him 75%. And if I say I can invite him, it means 50% and could is used as for possibility of an action in present for 40%.
less than can so I could invite I could invite him it means 40% I may invite him it means 30% and if I say I might invite him that is 15% and if I say I will invite him it is future possibility 50% informal way and I shall invite him formal and polite way in future for 50%. So these are the model auxiliary verbs which are used before your non-finite verb. These must, ought to, should, can, could, may, might, will, shall are your verbs which are telling you the exact possibility. So that's why we call them finite verbs. Could is one of them. The remaining ones I have written here. For the detail of these all, you can watch my videos about model auxiliary verbs where I have taught them. Detail. In the same way, we have gotten the next example. Smoking is a bad habit. Now, is is the finite verb which is telling you the tense that is present simple. But smoking is ing form of the verb which is known as your gerund. What is gerund? It is known as verbal. When a verb doesn't work as a verb in a sentence, it works as a noun in a sentence is called verbal. But when it works as a noun in a sentence, then it is called gerund. Now, smoking is a bad habit. It is the name of an action here we are talking about. Here, this verb is not working as ing form as a verb in a sentence, but it is working here as a noun in a sentence. That's why we call it here non-finite or infinite verb. Grammatically, it is a gerund which is working as noun. So, is is your finite verb here telling you the present simple tense, but here smoking is not telling you the tense, the exact tense. That's why we call it non-finite or infinite. Broken chair is was yours. Now, here broken is working as non-finite verb. It is working as a verbal. In verbal, it is working as a participle. What is participle? When a verb doesn't work as a verb in a sentence, it works as an adjective. Now it is modifying the noun chair and what is an adjective? An adjective is a word which modifies a noun or pronoun. Here it is modifying your chair, which chair? Broken chair working as verb, as a not verb but as uh, adjective in a sentence. Broken is adding just here something in here. Here it is your non-finite or finite verb. And was is your, is your finite verb which is telling that it is past simple. Is this showing present simple? Here was is showing past simple. We want to play cricket. Want is here your finite verb, but here to play is your full infinitive. What is full infinitive? Two plus first form of the verb when works as a noun in a sentence is known as full infinitive. Here your full infinitive is working as infinite or non finite verb. It is not telling you the tense. But here it is name of an action that I want to play cricket. So here it is known as non-finite verb. Hope the lecture about infinite verbs or non-finite verbs is clear to you all. Wish you best of luck for the next lecture. See you next time. Good.